Hey guys, Nerdicane doing uh, Punisher the Platoon 2. I'm just going to dive right into it. I actually just filmed that like a minute and a half ago. Um, trying to, I got a little bit of time today. I'm kind of sort of caught up with my, my schoolwork, so I'm cranking out some vids. Um, those dudes doing a good job on this book. Um, like I said before, this is a buy. This is a buy. This is a buy. Uh, this series so far has not disappointed. And getting into it, you know, they had just done their first patrol. There's these, these old guys. There's really interesting things being said. I'm not going to give it away. I don't want to get a strike. But there's really interesting things being said uh, here with the current time interview, uh, which makes this kind of flashback story, this, this story told in flashback, very interesting. And uh, uh, I hate to say fun because they're talking, you know, they're talking about a war. Um, you know, I... In comic book form, you really don't want to tell a whole lot of war stories because uh, war is just so... It's real and it's horrible. Uh, but as far as telling a war story in a comic book, this has been very respectful of it. Uh, back in World War II, they really didn't have the superheroes go over and fight the Nazis uh, as content in the comics. You know, they used them for for support and and uh, bond drives and things like that to support the troops. But they didn't want to diminish what the troops were going through over there in Europe during World War II by, you know, having Captain America or Superman go out there and just wipe out an Italian, an, an, an entire battalion of Nazis. Uh, real Nazis. Like 1940s Nazis. Real Nazis. Um, they didn't do that in their stories because they, you know, they didn't want to minimalize what the troops were doing. So they used them in a different way. You know, they didn't, they used them for war bonds and, and, uh, oh God, I forget what it's called when they go around and they have all the kids and all the people like collect scrap metal. Uh, I forget what that's called, but that's what they did. They didn't, they didn't really want to touch on the actual war to minimalize what the troops were doing. And this does a good job of like not, it's a comic book. But it's not over the top Rambo style Punisher uh, Frank Castle. He's one butter bar. He's an he's a second lieutenant. This is about his first command. Uh, he's one guy fighting a war, uh, and it does a, a very good job of, of uh, portraying that. So, <clears throat> cut to this is nighttime. This is the night of Tet. And historically, if you if you read about Tet, uh, I can't remember if Tet is the is like a Vietnamese New Year or if it's uh, or if it's like a Day of the Dead for them. I can't remember what it is, but it was it's a big holiday. It's like a big holiday, sort of like roll like New Year's and and Fourth of July and everything rolled into one for them. And they and we kind of got suckered into thinking. We suckered ourselves into thinking there wasn't really going to be a whole lot going on. Um, you know, all the Vietnamese celebrated this, both the North and the South. And it turns out that it was a massive offensive. Um, in the history of human war, there has been a number of what I call, of what we call in the modern age, Zerg rushes. Um, this was a Zerg rush on a national scale. Every base, every embassy, everything was hit all at one time, coordinated across the entire country. And this offensive was so costly that this caused a lot of our media uh, back here in the States when they saw this. When this happened, there was no more lying that we were winning the war. Uh, this was definitely not something that happens in a war that you're winning. Uh, and a lot of the media basically started saying, okay, this war is unwinnable. The protests here in America ramped up because we said, look, we're not winning this war. They're lying to us on, on the results. Um, get out. So this is, this is uh, Frank Castle's platoon. They're off of the base. They're kind of a, I forget what these are called, like satellite base of Quezon. Um, and they're getting Zerg rushed. Uh, it's flipping back and forth. There's a lot, a very interesting panel on, on, you know, just like this guy, just what actual, 
what happens to your brain in an actual combat situation? Um, you know, normal people can just kind of snap. And once again, it's, it's, we cut to this lady's storyline and uh, she considers herself a grunt. She considers herself a soldier. Uh, and this guy is kind of trying to make her into a commander. And um, she's, you know, she's, in story-wise, she's heading headlong into uh, conflict with Frank Castle. So, I mean, we're still seeing her unfold. Um, been a little bit of development. Uh, it gets so bad, they're, they're getting rushed so hard, and they're getting overrun, that uh, they order fixed bayonets. And in World War II and back... Uh, that was, you know, just something that happened. Um, especially in the days when we were using muskets in the Revolution and the Civil War. Uh, in modern war, these weapons can just fire and fire and fire, and we have clips, and we have lots of clips, and generally you don't hear that. You don't hear the order fix bayonets coming. Uh, and nowadays a lot of soldiers wouldn't know how to do it. Uh, I was in the Air Force. I know everything about the M16. I know how to take it apart. I know how to use it. Uh, I don't... I, if somebody said, hey, fix, uh, fix a bayonet, I would not know how to do it. So it's not a common order nowadays, and it wasn't a common order back then. But that's not what you want. You know, if you're fixing bayonets, you're going to do a bayonet charge, and it's going to get close combat, and it's going to be really, really ugly. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, this is rated mature, and they're not pulling any punches. Uh, yeah, it's it's horrible. If you're fixing bayonets, horrible shit is about to go down. Um, right here, the Ma Deuce is getting overrun, and Frank Castle's got to go take it. Uh, Ma Deuce is a big, big gun. I forget what caliber it is, but it's meant to uh, it's meant to shoot at tanks and vehicles. It's not. I mean, you can shoot it at people, but uh, it's just a big, big, scary gun that sends a lot of metal forward. And uh, basically, if these guys had taken it and operated it, they would have wiped the platoon out. And so basically, Frank just runs up there, Audie Murphy style. Um, oh, yeah. If you don't know who Audie Murphy is, look it up. It's, he's a, a war hero turned movie star. Uh, old, old guy stuff. History stuff. So they kind of survived and their platoon didn't take any, any casualties uh, but then through mortar fire their base gets destroyed it hits the, uh, hits the ammo dump and just completely destroys the base so the platoon and this is you know this has been a slow burn up until the middle of this issue um, now we're going to start seeing the things that shaped Frank Castle in, in this war um because these guys are out on their own. They were already low, uh, low supplied to begin with. And now their main base, where all the supplies were, has been destroyed. So it's setting up for, I'm guessing, a, a trek back. They're going to have to trek back to a safe zone. And in that, we're going to see the story and, and how these uh, Frank Castle and... Oh, I can't remember her name, but... Uh, this lady, uh, how their fates are kind of kind of intertwine, and what's going to happen between them. So, um, looking forward to it. Uh, this is a buy. This is turning into a really good story, really gritty. Um, like I said in the last episode, I really wish Marvel would do a little more of this, as opposed to, you know, pumping out Squirrel Girl uh, and events that we don't care about that we're just like we've lost interest in so uh yeah this is good storytelling so far uh we'll see where it goes thanks for watching uh as always i'm nerdicane you can hit me up in the uh, comments hit a like hit a subscribe uh tell me what you think tell me if you have any thoughts on it and uh usually i don't have that many followers so uh, i usually reply to everybody so thanks for your time thanks for watching have a good day